What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the top 5 stocks that I'm looking to trade in the month of February in 2019. So for all you guys out there that are new to my channel, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys who want to learn more about that, follow along with me me in my journey in the stock market feel free to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe follow me on instagram as well as on twitter and join our discord group chat as well as our facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box and please guys do your own research before trading and investing in any stocks in the stock market do not buy sell trade any of these stocks that I'm talking about in this video solely off of my opinion. You have to do your own research, you have to understand the risk, and you have to formulate a plan for yourself because that's the only way you're going to become successful trading and investing in the stock market. Another quick reminder, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this, but this upcoming week, starting off on the 28th of January, we're entering arguably the biggest week of earnings that we've seen in a while, guys. A lot of the largest companies in the whole entire world are reporting earnings, and this is going to dictate how well the stock market is going to be doing over the next couple of months, what our economy as a whole is looking like, and quite frankly, you know, the strength of our economy as a whole. We want to see what these companies are going to be reporting in earnings to see, you know, how much money, you know, are consumers out there spending, right? It's very, very important. And I have a screenshot here for you guys so you can see, you know, the major earnings report reports over the next couple of days. So Monday, not too crazy of a day. We have Caterpillar, Whirlpool, and all of these other ones. But the fun starts to begin on Tuesday when we have Apple, AMD, eBay, we have Verizon, we have 3M. And then on Wednesday, arguably the biggest day of earnings, Alibaba, Facebook, Microsoft, Tesla, PayPal, Visa, you know, McDonald's, AT&T, Thursday, General Electric, Amazon, which is very huge, guys, UPS, we have Altria, Nokia, just to name a few here, and then on Friday, we have Exxon, Mobil, Merck, Chevron, Honeywell, Cigna, you know, Sony, a bunch of big, big earnings reports this week, guys, and this is going to have a huge sway on the stock market, whether it's positive or it's negative. So I just want to let you guys know this before we go into this video, because some of the stocks I'm talking about in this video are reporting earnings. And I typically don't like to trade uh, stocks before earnings, which is why I'm going to be waiting after earnings to trade most of these stocks that I'm going to be talking about. So without further ado, guys, Let's get right into the topic of today's video, starting off with the SPX here, the S&P 500 index. Let's just get a better understanding of where the overall market has been pushing over the past couple of weeks. So we all know that have been paying attention to the markets, right? We've been selling off very heavily from the beginning of October. The SPX, S&P 500 hit around, you know, 2950 as a high. And from there, it went all the way down to 2346 which was nearly a 21% drop by, you know, the end of December. And since the end of December, guys, 26th of December to be exact, we've went from 2346, headed into the new year of 2019, up nearly 12% in the S&P 500. But the one thing I want you guys to keep an eye on here, and I've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, is this resistance right here at the 180 SMA on this 180 day four hour chart the spx has been rejected here once twice three times in the past and it's looking like we're having struggle breaking above it here we saw this past um i believe thursday or wednesday we got rejected pretty hard by this uh 180 sma and then we had a big gap up day this past friday we were in a bull wedge right here or uh, a bullish pennant formation rather and we popped out above it and now we're trading right under that same resistance at around 26.75 from the previous uh pop-up that we had back on the 18th of January. So, you know, 
In terms of the overall SPX, guys, this is, you know, the earnings reports are really going to dictate where this is going to be going, right? Are we breaking above the 180 SMA, which is going to change the trend completely? Or are these earnings going to be poor, right? The stock prices are going to go down, thus dra dragging down the entire index. So that's why this week is very, very important, guys. These numbers that the companies are going to report, this is going to affect the entire stock market and probably bring it down or push it up out of this 180 SMA resistance. So now let's get into some stocks, guys, that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for this upcoming month. And again, do your own research. Please do not buy or sell any of this. Uh, these stocks that I'm going to be talking about. And the first one that I am going to be talking about in this video is ticker symbol AMD Advanced Micro Devices. So we've seen a lot of action this past couple of weeks, really just the past week and a half, two weeks in the semiconductor um, you know, group of stocks, right? The three main ones that I follow are AMD, which has been doing very well, Micron, which I'm personally invested in in my longer term portfolio, which has been absolutely killing it recently, and NVIDIA, right? This one's been doing pretty well as well from the bottom at around 124 all the way up to, you know, 120 uh, or 160 rather right now. So what I like in terms of AMD, guys, is this bullish move that we're seeing, right? We saw it bounce or rather we saw it hold on the 180 SMA for about a month, not really a month, for about two, three weeks, I would say, right? From the 8th of January all the way to around the 23rd of January, and then we saw it break this resistance, which I was waiting to see if it was going to break at around $21.30. And obviously, we can see here, we're at around $22 nearly in the share price of AMD. So what I want to see, guys, is I want to see A, them report their earnings. I'm going to wait to see what they're doing in terms of price action after earnings. And let's say they pull back after earnings, guys, and let's say their earnings report wasn't terrible. Let's say it was decent, right? We get a little pullback. I would love to see a better position to enter at around $21.50. If we do pull back here and end up holding this previous resistance as a support, guys. And for all you beginners out there, whenever a, a stock, whenever the candlesticks break above a resistance, it becomes a new support level. So a new support level would be around 21.45. If we do pull back there, guys, that's also going to bring down the RSI level a bit, the relative strength index, because right now we can see it seems a bit overbought. Right, and if we do sell off, this is going to be coming, uh, be going down more towards the oversold uh, portion, right? Right around 50 to 55 would be my guess. So if we do end up pulling back, and that would open up a good entry point in AMD if it is able to hold this uh, resistance as a new support and slowly start to climb its way back up. And from there, guys, the next resistance that I'm really seeing here would be around you know $23.75 to $24. So that's the number one stock guys I'm watching in the month of February it is AMD the next one I'm watching is ticker symbol Tesla so a lot of stocks um, in the stock market right now are under heavy scrutiny and there isn't one that's under more scrutiny in my personal opinion than Tesla right we saw the 7% layoff that they had that tanked the stock down from 350 roughly all the way down to 280 I personally got in here about last week took a little loss but now we're seeing that we're seeing some strong support and consolidation on a previous support level back at 290. And remember, guys, Tesla's also reporting earnings. I believe it was on Wednesday, right? Tesla's reporting earnings on Wednesday, so I would love to see what happens to the stock after reporting their earnings. And let's say this consolidation stays, right? Let's say we start to push back up, maybe get back into the low 300 levels. That could be a good opportunity to hop into Tesla and swing it to the next resistance at around 330. But there's been a lot of problems surrounding Tesla, guys. Their earnings report doesn't seem to be, um, you know, it's not really expected to be too great. Elon Musk has said there's going to be profitability issues this this quarter production issues as well. So this might honestly, if it doesn't end up pushing back up, this could be a good put option play if the stock really does pushing uh, starts to push back down back into the 280s 
these 270s and 260s after their earnings report, which is why I think, and I personally always wait till a company reports their earnings before hopping into the stock, right? Because we'll get to see the reaction of the stock to the earnings report and thus, you know, react to that as investors and traders, right? Let's say the stock's pushing down, you know, that could be a good idea, opportunity to play a short-term put option and maybe short the stock, right? But let's say, you know, the earnings report wasn't that bad, the market's not reacting too poorly to it and it starts to push up. You know, that could be a good opportunity to hop in for a potential day trade or a couple of days uh, as a swing trade, right? So Tesla, guys, that's the second one I'm watching. Again, reporting earnings on Wednesday, so keep an eye out for Tesla. And another company that's reporting earnings is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. And this is another stock I'm watching and looking to potentially play a short put option on it guys because we've seen China right we've seen China they're doing very poorly in their economy they said Apple products are not doing too well in China and China is obviously a very big market for Apple's products so their earnings report that's going to come out we already know revenue is going to miss heavily right they cut their revenue expectations drastically for those of you guys that don't know and this a lot of people already say is priced into the stock and I can't really argue with you because the stock did get down to around 142 and obviously since the beginning of 2019 we've been pushing back up but I do honestly think guys that there is going to be some negative reaction to Apple stock and we do have a potential to start to sell back off maybe back into the high 140s maybe to the low 150s right and that does open up a good opportunity for a put option play in my personal opinion and especially since we are a bit overbought on the stock right now on the 184 hour chart and we're right by this 180 day um you know four hour uh you know SMA resistance right here on Apple stock. But again, guys, let's say, you know, the market positively reacts to the earnings report, which is unlikely in my opinion. And let's say we push out of this resistance and out of this uh, 158 resistance, you know, Apple could be a play in the 160s, maybe from the 160s, you know, low 160s to the mid 160s. That's very, very possible. But again, I don't think that's too likely right now on a short-term basis, like a month out. I'm pretty short on Apple, guys. I do think it's going to be going down in price you know, over the next couple of weeks, and I could be 100% wrong, guys. This is just my personal opinion. I think we're going to be going down. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think right now in terms of Apple? So another stock I'm looking to trade in the month of February is Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ. And this is actually a stock that is considered a value play, right? This is a stock that I'm personally invested in in my long-term portfolio. This is a dividend-paying stock. It's a dividend aristocrat. And speaking about dividends, guys, if you guys want to see five dividend stocks that I'm personally looking to buy and some that I'm, that I'm already invested in, I made a video yesterday called Five Dividend Stocks for 2019. Go check that video out. It's the one before this one. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good value in that video. If you're interested in bringing... Uh, uh, you know, uh, producing an income, uh, you know, investment strategy, right? Very, very important for a longer term investor. Go check out that video. But anyway, in terms of Johnson & Johnson on a shorter term play here, let's draw out some resistance levels and some support so I can give you guys my thesis and my reasoning why I like this stock as a potential play. And I've been talking about this one, you know, in the group chat, in a couple of videos recent, uh, recently. I haven't pulled the trigger on it in terms of a trade, but I do want to once we start to see a break out of this 180 SMA. So Johnson & Johnson, guys, they reported their earnings last week. I believe they beat on EPS and they beat on revenue, but the stock went from 132 all the way down to 126. And so now we're seeing it's trading in this horizontal channel from around 126 up to 132, giving it around a four, uh, three, 4% 4 margin of profit from this bounce, right? And I want to see 
whether or not we're going to break this 50 SMA resistance and this 180 SMA resistance here on the 20 day one hour chart to continue the uptrend uh, reversal pattern to see if we're going to get back to the higher 130s or maybe, you know, the lower to mid 130s, um, you know, giving us a good opportunity for a trade. So I'm going to set an alert guys here on Johnson and Johnson. I'm going to put one at around $129. Let me quickly do that here. And for those of you guys that don't know how to create an alert, very simple. You right click, right? You go to create alert. You go to mark is at or above. You want to be alerted when the stock is at or above. And then you set your price target right here for me. $129 is when I want to be alerted. If Johnson & Johnson is breaking that 180 SMA on this 20-day, one-hour chart, that's going to be a good opportunity, in my opinion, to hop in and take advantage of, let's say, a 2% move back to that previous resistance, guys. And I know 2% may not seem too attractive to you, but as a more conservative investor, me personally, guys, I think that's great, right? For example, if you have $10,000 and you want to put $10,000 into this trade, 2% over, let's say, a couple of days, that's $200, right? That's $200 that you didn't have before. And in my opinion, guys, you can't really complain about getting a profit in the market, guys. In my opinion, it's all, it's all about, you know, keeping it consistent, keeping it, you know, small wins over time. And uh, that just really helps with, with success, in my personal opinion, you know, when trading stocks. So we talked about J&J, &J, Apple, AMD, and uh, what was the other one we talked about? Tesla. Now let's talk about one inverse ETF that I'm personally looking to trade in this upcoming month, right? And I've been trading this one a lot over the past couple of uh, months, guys, and really just for the past couple of years at this point. And that is you guys ticker symbol UGAZ. And this one trades based upon natural gas futures, guys. And UGAZ itself is a bull natural gas ETF, meaning whenever natural gas is going up in price, UGAZ is going up in price as well. So we recently saw a huge sell-off in natural gas from around 370, and this happened back in the on the 14th of January all the way down to around 296. And this 296 level is holding a higher low from the previous low at around 290, right? 290 here, you can see it. And if I draw the trend line, you can see it's maintaining the uptrending pattern. And now we're seeing that slowly natural gas itself is making higher highs, right? And it's making higher lows. It bounced here at 305, which was a previous, uh, you know, a higher low from the previous at around $3. So what I would like to see guys ultimately before taking a position in you guys, I would love to see a push above around 320, which is the resistance level we are at right now. And then ultimately ahead into, you know, the 320 to 325 price level. I just want to see a continuation of this upwards trending pattern in terms of natural gas. And that'll give you guys, guys, a lot of opportunity in my personal opinion from the level that it's at right now at around $48, right? Back up to levels like $64, $60, maybe even the $55, mid $50 range in terms of UGAS. So I'm going to set an alert, guys, on UGAS uh, at $50. I want to be notified when it's at or above $50. That'll put it right above that 180 SMA here on the 20-day, uh, one-hour chart. And that's going to be the price level that I would like to buy, right? That's a pretty good um, level in my personal opinion to see you guys break above. So we talked about five ETFs stocks, you know, in the month for the month of February in 2014. I want to leave you guys with one more um, little, tr uh, not really a trick, uh, just one more little piece of uh, advice, guys. So this month in February could be a very volatile month. Obviously, we talked about the earnings reports that are coming. These could have a huge sway on the entire stock market. Not only that, guys, the trade war with Trump and China, there needs to be a decision made by March 1st. This is the deadline that Trump and China said that they're going to come to a trade war agreement by, right? And if that does end up happening, 
this could be very good for the market, right? But if it doesn't end up happening, February and March and April could be very, very crazy, crazy months of volatility in the stock market. So, you know, with anticipation of this trade war deal and these earnings reports, I think February is going to be a very volatile, choppy month. And what can you do to trade in markets like this? You can trade market ETFs, right? And there's two ETFs here in particular that you can trade when the markets are going down. And those are TVIX and SQQQ. These are two ETFs you can trade when the markets are selling off. But let's say the markets are doing good for a couple of days like they have been over the past couple of weeks. You can trade TQQQ as well as QQQ. These are two ETFs that do very well when the markets are going up in price, right? They track the markets, you know, the market movement is going up one day, you know, QQQ as well as TQQQ is going to be going up. But let's say the markets are heading down, bad earnings reports, negative press, news about Trump, China, trade war, whatever's going on, bringing down the markets, that would be a good opportunity to trade TVIX as well as, um, you know, SQQQ. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter. All the links are down below in the description box. I really do appreciate all you guys that watch the videos, that like the videos, that subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me. And without you guys, this channel would not be anything. And, you know, that's just crazy to me, right, guys? So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks again for all the support. Peace out.